In this video, I will demonstrate how to fill out an expense claim using Concur. This will show you the most common expenses for travel under council business and can be done in less than 10 minutes. This video has bookmarks and in the video description, so you can go back and rewatch each step as needed. And it's recommended that you watch the video in its entirety first, then rewatch the video pausing along the way after each section so you can follow along with your own expense claim. Before we get started, you'll want to make sure that you have all the appropriate documents available digitally, as we'll have to upload receipts along the way during the claim process. Common expenses that require receipts are airfare, parking in an airport, taxi or rideshare receipts, and baggage fees. Now, if you drove to a meeting versus flying, before you begin, you'll want to reach out to Patricia Kraus to get a cost analysis done first. Okay, let's get started. First, you'll navigate to the Concur website by visiting www.concursolutions.com. When prompted, you're going to enter your username. It's always going to be your first, followed by a period, then your last name, at pcouncil.org. From there, you'll enter the password that you generated after the account was initially set up for you. Now that you're signed into the Concur dashboard, you'll notice your navigation buttons along the top. You're going to select Start a Report. Next, we're going to be prompted to give the report a name. It's always best practice to simply name the report whatever meeting it was that you attended and are asking reimbursement for. So for this example, I'm going to use the November 2022 Council meeting. The date next to it is simply auto-generated, and it's the date that we're starting this report. Next, you're asked if you are going to receive travel allowance. Travel allowance refers to per diem. So if we offered per diem as part of our attendance to our meeting, you will always select yes in that case. Select next in the lower right-hand corner. So now we need to enter in our itinerary information so that Concur can calculate our per diem for this trip. It's important to note that the itinerary has nothing to do with whether you took a plane, train, or automobile to get to the meeting. It all has to circle around where you left from and on what date, where the meeting city location was, not necessarily where you flew into, and what day you went home. It takes those three pieces of information and it will calculate your per diem for the week and automatically apply it to this expense claim. So for the November 2022 council meeting, I'm gonna to go to Departure City. I flew out of Portland, Oregon. The date was November the 1st. My flight flew out at 8 a.m. Our meeting was in Garden Grove, California. And I, you'll notice as I type, it starts to populate from a list below. You always want to select from the list. Uh, that way it ensures that it is pulling from their database. I landed on the same day. So a lot of people will make the mistake of putting the day they headed home here. You always want this to be the first leg of your trip. So I left Portland for Garden Grove on the first. And let's say I landed at 1130 AM. It's also important to note that the timestamps do not have to be exact. Uh, as close as you can get them is okay. Now that I've created that first leg of the trip, I'm gonna click save. And that first part of the itinerary has been generated here. And now I need to enter in the return trip. And you'll notice that it automatically fills back in that I'm leaving from Garden Grove back to Portland. The date for that would be December, excuse me, November the 9th. I flew out at 8 a.m and landed at 11.30 a.m. And I'm gonna click Save. And now my itinerary has been created. I'm going to click Next in the lower right. Now we need to go ahead and assign the itinerary that we just created in the previous step to this expense claim. To do that, you're going to notice that these buttons at the top, Edit and Unassign, are currently grayed out. Below that is the itinerary that we just generated on the previous step. We simply need to hover our mouse over that itinerary click it one time to select it, which will then assign it, turning these two buttons blue. That's all we need to do on this step. Next, you'll click Next in the lower right-hand corner. Now we're gonna be shown what our per diem is for the entire week. You'll notice that on travel days, you're getting $55.50, and on full days, you're getting $74. It's very important that on this step, you don't check any of these boxes or fill in any of these values. If you simply select create expenses in the lower right hand corner you'll be given the full value for per diem each day and not be required to upload any receipts for those meals 
If, however, you do check any of these boxes or make any edits, you'll be required to upload receipts for every meal. So it's always just easier and faster to collect the full per diem for your meals for that time and simply hit create expenses on this step. Now we're actually at the expense claim page. This is where we get to start finalizing our claim, adding some additional expenses. It's created the claim itself, and then it's applied the per diem that we did in the first two steps. You'll also notice that there's some alerts, there's nine, and they're demonstrated with these red exclamation points down this list. Now, if you click on one of those red exclamation points, it'll explain to you what that alert is indicating. So in this case, it's missing required field, for business purpose. And all of these have the same alert in this example. Basically it's saying, you're telling us that you were supposed to be reimbursed for this trip, but you haven't given us the business reason as to why. So to resolve this, you have a couple of ways of doing it. You can individually click on each one of these entries, which will load the details for the entry. And you'll notice that business purpose is one of the fields that you could enter the, the answer into. It's a required field, that's why it has the asterisk. And then you'd have to hit save expense except for you'd have to go and do that multiple times. It's much faster in this example when it's all the same uh, errors to simply click the checkbox at the top of this row, which will select all of them simultaneously, select edit, and you'll notice that business purpose is an option. So we're gonna say my business purpose was the 2022 council meeting. Now, if you sit on an advisory body or management team, you could put that in there, but generally just the meeting that you were at. It's also super important that you add the grant year information to each of these fields. So I'm gonna use this dropdown and the grant year for this was 2022. And then I'm gonna click next. It's gonna verify that those are the two pieces of information that I wanna to apply to these nine entries and I'm gonna click save. Now that I've done that, you'll notice that it resolved all of the alerts and I can go about submitting this claim if all I was asking for was per diem reimbursement. But generally, people will have a few other things to add. Some of the most common are airfare, parking in an airport, a taxi or ride share to get to and from the airport and the hotel, and then maybe baggage fees. So I'll demonstrate how you can go and add those various expenses. I'm going to uncheck these other entries, and then you'll notice that the only option left is add expense. So I'm going to select that, and then it's going to give me a list of various expense types that I can start with. This is a good uh, opportunity for you to go through and see what your options are in case it triggers uh, something that you think of that um, you wanna make sure to get reimbursed with that maybe I'm not covering in this example. So we're gonna start with the airfare. So I'm gonna select airfare from the transportation list. It's gonna have a series of fields that I'm gonna need to fill in. So it's an airfare expense. The transaction date is the day that I bought the ticket. So if this was the November council meeting, uh, let's say I bought the ticket on October the 5th. The business purpose, once again, is gonna be the November 2022 council meeting. Ticket number is not a required field, so you don't have to enter it. The vendor was Alaska. And as I type it, it starts to populate from the list. Once again, always best practice to select from their database list. The airline service code is not required. The city of purchase, I bought it when I was in Portland. So the next step is payment type. So individual pay means that you paid for it and on your credit card and thus you're being reimbursed. If we covered it because you used EasyBiz, for example, you would drop this down and you would put it, change it to company paid. The amount, in this case, I'm gonna put $359 US currency. And once again, we wanna select that grant year and apply it for the year that the meeting was in. Next, we're gonna to need to add a receipt. And so, as I said at the beginning of this video, you always wanna make sure that you're prepared with all of your receipts digitally because we're gonna to have to attach them to various expenses along the way. So I'm gonna click add receipt. And if you had a, a File Explorer window open, you can drag and drop those receipts here, or you can click upload and it'll open up the dialog box. And so I have some example receipts. So here's an airfare one that I made up for this video and it's gonna go ahead and attach it here. And I mistakenly forgot that it was 57 cents in this example. So there's a, there's a preview of the receipt that I had and all of the details match and line up. So I'm gonna save this expense. So now we have all of my per diem and the airfare. Another common expense that people might have a reimbursement for is baggage. So once again, we're gonna click add expense and go down the list under transportation, there's airline fees. 
We're going to select that. And from the drop down on this required one, you might find baggage. Transaction date is remembering that I selected 10.5 in my previous entry. It's also remembering the business purpose. And the vendor is Alaska. Portland, Oregon was the city purchase. That's fine. Individual pay because I paid for it. And the amount was $50 for a bag, grant year 2022. And then I'm going to click add receipt again, upload a receipt, grab my example receipt. Now, I want to point out that my example receipt is for 100. And that's because a lot of times what happens is you'll do a $50 baggage fee on the way down, another $50 to get your bag back. And so sometimes a lot of people will put those two stickers or, the, or whatever printout they have onto one file. And so in this example, I'm only going to claim $50 and I'm going to upload the receipt. And let's visualize that there's two images here for each leg of the trip. You'll just use the same file twice is what will happen. So I'm only claiming it for 50 on this step. I'm going to hit save expense. And then I would go back in and enter another $50 under airline fees uh, to go ahead and um, add that other expense. You'll notice that if I select the checkbox, the option to copy that expense shows up. So I'm going to do that. And now there's two versions of the airline fees, but it's throwing up a red exclamation point. So I'm going to look at what the errors are. And it says, what's your, uh, it's missing the required field airline fee type code. So I'm going to select the entry. And I'm going to go in and I make the adjustment. So we need to tell it that this is for baggage. And the trip transaction date, I'm going to change the date to the date that I flew back, which is going to be the 9th. And then I'm going to upload that same receipt, since it has both images on it, and hit Save Expense. So other common expenses that we see are parking at the airport or perhaps taking a taxi or ride share from the airport to the meeting location or back. Those are going to follow the exact same steps as I demonstrated in the previous examples. You're going to click add expense, select the expense type from the list, fill in the prompts, anything that's got the red asterisk, make sure to include those details and then upload your receipts. The one that does seem to uh, either be forgotten or some can be somewhat tricky at times is the personal car mileage entry. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. We're going to enter personal car mileage into the search field and select there. And personal car mileage can cover your reimbursing you for the miles that you drove from, let's say, your home to the airport to leave your vehicle for the trip. If you ended up driving from your home to the meeting destination, again, as stated at the beginning of this video, you're going to want to reach out to Patricia Krauss before going through this process so she can do a cost analysis. This is done because if you drove hundreds of miles to get there and our reimbursement rate for those miles is higher than what an airline ticket would have cost, you will only ever be reimbursed up to whichever is the cheaper of the methods that you could have gotten to the meeting. And that's why she'll do a cost analysis. They'll take into consideration that and a variety of other factors. So you want to reach out to her before going down that road. So this is more of an example of how you're going to enter your personal car mileage from getting to and from the airport at the beginning and end of your trip. So we entered personal car mileage. The transaction date was the last day of the trip. That's fine. The from location is going to be, and it would be your home address. I'm going to put in the council office in this example. And you want to do the full address, zip code included. The to location is going to be Portland Airport, Portland, Oregon. Now, for this example, it's going to be really small because our office is located right next to the airport, but you'll get the idea that you'll go from your home location to whatever airport you drove to. We're going to select grant year 2022 because that's when the travel occurred. And now you'll notice that there's a mileage calculator link up here in the upper left. We're going to select that. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull the two addresses that I plugged in, our office address and the airport address. And like I said, we're right next to the airport, so this is not going to be a big reimbursement. But if you had you know, an hour or so to drive, this would make a lot more sense. So it's 2.3 miles to get from our office on the roadway up to the terminal. And then we are obviously going to want to also calculate when I fly back in the, the return trip. So I'm going to select Make Round Trip. And then I'm going to select Add Mileage to Expense. 
It's going to auto fill in the total distance, the amount of reimbursement in US dollars, and I'm going to hit save expense. Now that we've finished uploading all the materials for our report, we can go ahead and submit it. You're going to select the submit report button in the upper right hand corner, followed by accept and submit, and you'll be done with the expense claim. Now, because this is a test account and hasn't been fully set up, I have an error message here telling me that I need to set up my profile, including my banking information. This is how auto deposit may occur. If this is your first time using Concur, you might also run into this. To set up your profile, you're going to select the profile icon in the upper right hand corner, then go to profile set settings. And you'll find that you can enter in your bank information here. Please enter in the pertinent details so that we can do auto deposit for your expense claim. 